All right, uh, Keith Lerner, Chief Market Strategist at Truist SunTrust Advisory, joins us now for a chat on the markets. Keith, always good to see you. So help us get a read on earnings season. Uh, IBM earlier in the week said on their conference call they are seeing a demand pause. Verizon, our parent company, revenue fell in the most recent quarter. Netflix uh, subscriber missed. Snapchat, bullish outlook for the rest of the year. What's your biggest takeaway uh, from, from earnings so far? It's, it's getting pretty confusing out there. Yeah, well, for us, great to be back with you, Brian and the crew. I think it's really early in the earnings season to get a really good picture, but I will say, I know there's some one-offs, but overall, we have that earnings beat rate above 85%. And what's really important is the forward earning estimates for the market continues to move higher. So as we kind of chop along here, the last, uh, it's really since September, we've had a you know, big rise, I'm sorry, a big decline and then a big rise. Uh, but net-net, we're basically trading sideways. And what's, what's, what's happening is, as earnings continue to push higher, that PE multiple continues to compress a little bit. So we think that's a positive. And that now we think the earnings story, uh, at least for the market, is somewhat underappreciated, especially as we look into next year. Keith, you know, do you feel as though earnings so far that the what you've seen does it justify the market at current levels? Yeah, no, we, we do. We think, you know, our overall sense is one of a bullish view, um, especially on a 12 month basis. But we have to remember, you know, we had a um, uh, basically, basically a nine to 10 percent decline. Then we had a nine to 10 percent rise. And right now, I think the market's just digesting those recent gains. And we, as we all know, we're only a few weeks away from the election. There's a lot of stimulus back and forth. But overall, the earnings picture, as I mentioned, is still positive. We expect the season to be an earnings uh, positive well above the historical average. And I think that bodes well longer term. But again, near term, I think we're more in a, in a bit of a chop. Keith, what are you doing with your uh, tech holdings at the moment? I'm talking about big cap tech. Uh, given all the attention they're getting on Capitol Hill, we've got that DOJ suit against Google. Uh, mm -hmm. There is real concern that you know lawmakers are coming for these big tech companies and something's going to go down, whether they're going to be broken up or they're going to be new restrictions on them. Does that change your view on these companies at all? We know we're still overweight technology, and you know it's uh, in some ways it's, it's really important to look at how the market's reacting to these things. And overall, I think the technology stocks even look today the last couple of days they've reacted well. Don't forget we've been dealing with potential um, you know breakup of technology for several years. Maybe that's you know maybe that's a more likely scenario after you know depending on what happens on the election. But the way we're playing this overall big picture from a sector perspective. We have a barbell of growth sectors as overweight as far as tech and discretionary. Discretionary is quasi-tech, given Amazon such a big part of that. And then based on our belief of a early expansion, we are overweight industrials and materials. And the way that will work is when we have a little bit of a slowdown in the economy, we expect the growth sectors to do better. And as we get into more of a sustainable move up in the economy, these uh these industrial and material sectors should do well. And the big picture too right now, um, you know, look at within tech, you have semiconductors that just made a new relative high. The relative strength of technology as a whole is still relatively firm. And outside of tech, you're seeing things like industrials and transportation stocks still act very well. Keith, but do you think investors should be putting more stock in what Netflix had to say last night? Their guidance that paid subs will actually decline in the first half of 2021. That that could be indicative for a lot of work from home plays, a lot of the big cap tech companies. And you have to take a step back and think, is now that now the time not to be buying the dip in Netflix and, and stocks like it and, and perhaps searching elsewhere? Well, and, and you know, it's interesting. Netflix right now is in a communica communication sector, which we actually downgraded last month. But the, the technology sector is much broader than, than just, say, like a Netflix. And we, we're still positive there. But we do agree earlier this year we were primarily in growth sectors. And over the last few months, we've have rotated more towards a mix of growth and cyclicals. Um, after the election, you know, as we see a little more economic uh, traction, we may potentially move even more towards these economically sensitive sectors. But we like where we're positioned today. And don't forget the technology sector as a whole. It's, it was one of the first sectors to have the forward earning estimates above the pre-COVID levels. And I think regardless, those companies are still in a good secular position. You know, Keith, looking forward, uh, on consumer discretionary, we're approaching the, the holiday shopping season. Uh, mm -hmm. How important is it for that trade, which is, has been pretty good? You're seeing a lot of retail stocks hold up there. Uh, how important is it that we get stimulus to, to underpin that trade? Well, I think it's important, um, especially, you know, on more of a selective basis. But I will say, um, if you look at the consumer uh, discretionary sector, and you can look at it on an equal weight basis, so that way, you know, Amazon's effect is somewhat less. 
that's at an all time high. So that's telling us that the economy is relatively sound. And even though this stimulus is, you know, without it, the economy will grow slower. Don't forget, there's some important offsets right now. You know, when we had initially the stimulus back early this year, we were losing millions of jobs. Now we're gaining millions of jobs. The savings rate, although it's come down, is still well above historical levels. So we're still positive on, on the overall uh, consumer discretionary sector. It's still an overweight in our, in our work. Hey, Keith, Before, what's your take but, on financial stocks right now? I mean, we saw a lot of the big banks come out uh, with earnings mm-hmm. that were still able to beat estimates, but they're in a very challenging environment. What's your exposure to bank stocks right now? Well, we're, we've uh, we've been underweight. We are still underweight. They are extremely cheap on most of the metrics that we look at. In order for the banks to do well, typically you need to see higher interest rates. Now, you have seen interest rates creep up a little bit uh, and also a, a stronger economy. So again, we're going to be patient there and let the market tell us it's time to move in. Earning trends are starting to improve on the margin. And I would say within the financials, the regionals are starting to act better than the big banks. And so for folks that are interested in in bottom feeding, that's where we would pay more attention to. But in our work at this time, they're still in an underweight position, waiting for more confirmation of a more sustainable turnaround. Keith Lerner, Chief Market Strategist at Truist SunTrust Advisory. Always good to see you. Great to be here. Thank you.